Welcome everyone, I'm your host Logan23. You're joining me for chapters, interactive stories, all the wrong reasons. Chapter 3, you head home. You're just about to get ready for tonight when your phone rings. It's your mother. You sigh. You love her, of course, but despite your relationship, not because of it. Hi, Mom. How are you? Wonderful. Kimmy just got in Mass General. You know how hard that is? You have to be really sharp to be accepted for their residency program. I'm so proud of her. That's great. I'm proud of her, too. And it will look simply fantastic on a resume. But I'm worried about you, Adrian. Now I know it's not fair to compare you two, but really, she's got so much going for her. She is going to be successful wherever she goes. You on the other... Cut her off. I'm tired of hearing about Kimmy. You don't have to worry about me, Mom. I'm doing just fine. Fine? I would hope my daughters could both do better than fine. Mom, sorry. I have an assignment? I really have to go, Mom. Oh. Oh, I see. One of my daughters has no time for me. It's okay. I'm understanding, but you have to get what you can, you know? I've always said that. You realize that you're on the verge of tears. If you don't hang up now, she will ask why you're crying. Love you, Mom. Gotta go. Bye. You hang up, almost angry with yourself for how easily your confidence can be drained away. Yeah, that's typically what happens when a parent calls up and puts you down and buffs your sister. Or sibling. When normal people are feeling low, they call their boyfriends. You decide to do the same. Troy picks up on the fifth ring. Oh. Hey, babe, what's going on? Nothing much. I was just calling to say hi. Ah, well, hi back. I'm a little busy, though, so... Just... Can we talk later? I don't have time for this. I'll... I'll call you next week. Troy? Okay. Love you. Gotta go by! Yang's up. You stare at the floor. Your lip quivering. Let's be honest. Your boyfriend's cheating on you. <laughs> your mood is bottom out, so you're frustrated and angry. Angry. Angie. The worst part is, I'm not even sure why. You collapse onto your sofa, a range of emotions turning in your chest. I should stay home. I don't think I can completely ob com objectively review this place. I'll make it an excuse for Jada. No! Enough! I'm tired of my mother and Troy running my life. I'm going to be on my uh, own person. And to hell with what they think. Oh. Red satin cocktail dress that shows your midriff. Is that what they call that? Is that what a midriff is? I'm sorry, I'm a guy. I don't know what midriff means. White cocktail dress with black, black lace, bodice, and black silk overskirt. Not bad. Black cocktail dress with a keyhole bodice and lacy back. Oh, you know I'm a fan of black. Pick Jacob's dress. Oh, we, we can't just scroll back. Okay, pick Jacob's. You take the dress from the box, and at least he included accessories. You spend much longer than you meant to to get ready. Partly because of the butterflies in your stomach have begun to multiply. After putting on the dress, shoes, earrings, and all the rest, you look in the mirror and are stunned. Wow, I look like a completely different person. Your eyes are smoky and your lips are perfect dusky color. The white gold hoops tease into your hair. I, I look, well, good. I actually feel attractive. Should I take a selfie of myself before I leave? Strike a pose like the ones in your magazine, or... No, not this time. You stare at yourself a little longer, but don't take a picture. I can't post it online. Troy and my mother will give me the third degree. I guess I'm ready. Here goes nothing. The cab driver can't keep his eyes off of you. You arrive at Gypsy's more confident than ever. Hey, Pixelberry, take notes. It doesn't matter if we buy a diamond dress or not. She still looks attractive. I may not be as beautiful as Kim, but 
I can hold my own, and by gone, I'm gonna have fun. You secure, secure a place at the bar and silently thank Jada for insisting that you wear a new outfit. Let's see. What would not Adrian order? Tequila shot, please. You have to yell over the noise, but soon you have a shot glass in front of you. Thanks! Well, here's to an adventure. You drink the shot of tequila, you're about to order one more when you're interrupted. That one's on me. I can pay for my own drinks. That You look over to see who said it, and your tongue ties in knots. It's just an Adams. Interesting. I didn't peg you for the tequila type. Extremely aware of his gorgeous crystalline blue eyes, you gulp down the shot. Blue. You are immediately embarrassed that you just blurted that out. Thankfully, he plays along. Is that a drink? Uh, blue kava, it's... It's a type of tequila, I think? Uh, bartender, another, please. The bartender nods, Justin addresses him. Put that on my tab. What happened to your glasses? Glasses? The bartender takes them when they're empty. Justin chuckles and points to his eyes. Glasses! Oh, right! Uh, so, can we just say that that was the tequila talking? Of course we can. I hear sober Adrian Miller is quite articulate. You bring the next shot to your lips to hide your blush. Justin orders another for you and a beer for himself. Wait, how do you know my last name? Well, one, I've seen your name at the office. I do a little contract work for Blush, you know? Two, of all the girls at Blush, you're the most aloof. So, I got curious. And three, you're my next-door neighbor. You don't do anything loud, and your lights are off by ten. And so, I asked around. You're shocked. He thought you were the stalker here. Oh. That's right, you're the guy with the loud parties. I don't pay attention to when you turn off the lights. See? So you do know me. Hardly. It's not my job to keep up with the New York's Playboys. Playboy, huh? I guess you don't know me that well. Let's remedy that. Let's see. How about a dance? Should I dance with him? Are you trying to get completely plastered? Because if so, you're working on it. That's your third shot of tequila. Maybe after a couple of shots. Nope, not yet. I haven't had enough liquid courage. Later, maybe. Another tequila, please. And I'll take that as a no. Not a fan of dancing? I haven't said no yet. You look gorgeous tonight. Did I say that yet? You laugh and take the shot. The liquid fire warms you up. I hate to think how many times you've used that line. Believe it or not, I don't hit on girls very often. Why is that? Because you're too busy? They're too busy hitting on you? Justin laughs. He seems genuinely amused by your brazen tongue. Well, it's later. Come on, we're dancing. Gently, he takes your hands and gets up. In a happy daze, you follow. Okay, yes, we are gonna dance. The music slows down as you get to the dance floor. The beat strikes you as erotic. A pulse of warmth shoots you as his skin touches yours. Justin pulls you close and stares into your eyes as your bodies move in tandem. Too soon, the song is over. Another drink, perhaps? Yeah. You go back to the bar, hand in hand. His very touch is intoxicating. You look so different. Is that good or bad? It's just... different. I like it. I'm the same girl. I truly hope so. 
He brings your hand to his lips and kisses you softly. You nearly meld right then and there. Dance with me. You follow him back to the floor. He pulls your clothes, swaying with you to the music. This can't be real. Before you know it, he's trailing kisses along your neck. You can barely breathe. You take a step back. Uh, I, I need to use the ladies' room. I'll, uh, be right back. Okay. Go to the bathroom and take a look at yourself. You're tousled and fierce. I don't even recognize you. You freshen up and take a few deep breaths. You feel like you're charting unfamiliar territory here. But then you smile. You're a woman who can do anything! You go back out and find Justin waiting. What are you doing? Waiting for you. Why? I just wanted to make sure you made it back. To the bar? I got here by myself, Chief. Of course I can make it back. To me, then. Your eyes go wide, and you're thankful for the colored lighting so he doesn't see how hard you're blushing. Even though, technically, you did just fish for that. You're a flirt. What? You fished for a compliment, and now he's a flirt. I'm so confused. See, this is why I'm, a, I'm single. This is why, right here. He takes you back to the dance floor, where you spend what feels like hours kissing and dancing. You feel like his teasing and touches are going to set you on fire. I think I should go. Need a ride? I'm in no condition to drive. I can't imagine you are. I stopped drinking hours ago. Okay. You know what? Let's go. You ride through the city in near silence. Mostly, you're just focused on the fact that his body is pressed against yours. You make it to your apartment building in the elevator. The tension is thick. You're staring at each other, unwilling to look away or stop touching. Your hands have been linked since getting off of Justin's motorcycle. I want you. The elevator dings and you fly apart, each taking a separate corner. An older couple gets on and then off again a floor later. Do I make the first move and kiss him passionately? <laughs> I shouldn't. You want him so desperately, but in the back of your head, you remember that you're a virgin with a boyfriend. What am I doing? You look concerned. Don't be. Just come here. Suddenly, the dam breaks, and you're pulled together by the force of your attraction. You've never felt more alive. Your body is electrified by his touch. Justin trails kisses down your neck, whispering what he wants to do to you. Still kissing, he pulls you into his apartment. You don't notice where you are until the back of your knees hit the edge of his bed. I want you. Say yes. Yes? Smoothly and quickly. He pulls off your clothes. In a moment, you stand naked before him blushing. This girl, the, the one from the club, is bold, exciting. She must want to cover herself, but she does not. You are a fox. Shut up and kiss me. Before I change my mind. For 25 years of your life, you felt chained. Now, with his hands on you, you feel free. For a long time, you simply lie there, feeling each other, listening to the mingling of your breath, then you fall asleep, naked and entwined in each other's arms. Thanks for watching. That was the edited version of the story. If you're looking for the full entirety with everything in it, that was also up on the channel. You'll most likely see a little bit, a little tiny box popping up here soon that um, you can go watch that if you wish, unless you already have, and you, then you came and saw the edited version. I do thank you for tuning in. Feel free to like, comment, share, or subscribe. You can always go down the description below, and if you want to follow me on social media, or if you're feeling generous enough to support my content, you can do so there. And until next time, stay well, stay awesome, and I'll catch you all in the next video. Peace.